hey ho, let's go to intro <laughs> me, but all right. Um, hi guys, thanks so much uh, for allowing me to talk today. So basically, I'm going to be taking us through what I feel is Meta's lethal combination. So Matthew, my developer and I, we met uh, while actually training for a cage fight, believe it or not. And the saying that you don't want peas on your face, well, that's very much because I had to have peas on my face that day. Um, Matt took me down onto the ground and he decided he basically put his elbow through my face and for the next two weeks, my nose bled. Now, before you go and lend basin on beating up a girl, and also it's not that Matthew, so you don't <laughs> give him a hard time later, um, I had split his lip already and given him a bit of a black eye. You see, I was at that point, I was SA champ in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so I knew once we were down on the ground, I could definitely choke Matthew out. The problem was that my takedown defense was, well, it was rather pathetic. So if, the, if it basically would come to the stage that the fight would be over before I even got down to the ground, if I could not handle myself with takedowns, <coughs> MMA is essentially made up of three principles. You've got your stand-up fighting, you've got your takedowns, and you have your groundwork. <coughs> you can't handle yourself in all three disciplines it's basically me KO night night before it's even started. UFC won uh, the Ultimate Fighter Championship. I'm pretty sure quite a few have heard of it. Um, was initially born because they wanted to find out who would be better, uh, the ginger cousin of judo or um, your karate. Would Bruce Lee be able to beat Tyson? Would Chuck Norris's karate take on Steven Seagal's Aikido? And so they got all these fighters that were the best in their disciplines together, put them in a cage, and said, well, who is the best? The, the funny thing that came out about it is that no particular fighting style actually dominated. It came down to the person that would go away and learn all those disciplines that would essentially become the ultimate fighter. I think that in our industry, it's, it's, it's quite similar. We have a lot of... Mm, separate skill sets. So in a team you would have your developer who thinks that he's the most important person in the team. You'd have the SEO guy that thinks he rules the world. Um, content guys think that, you know, without them the project can't carry on and we won't even go there with designers. So <laughs> what we found for our user though, or for our clients, was once we took all of those elements and put them together was when we found that we actually had an ultimate product for them. Basically, there's three elements that make up our triangle and our lethal <coughs> combination, and I'll be going into each of them separately. I want to start with Google. Basically, I think when I put the slides together, which was about, about three, four days ago, there were 952,750.coza domains that were registered. I checked yesterday and it was already up by about <coughs> one, one and a half thousand that had been registered just in the last four days. Without Google, the only people that are looking at your site right now is your mother, yourself, and maybe your spouse, competitor, supplier. Um, if you're not on Google, no one is finding you. If I look at our client stats, we've got about 125 clients, and if I look at how, where they're getting their traffic to their websites from, it's about 85% of their traffic is coming through Google advertising. Lovely saying. In uh, Jiu Jitsu, we have a saying that if you give us a finger, you'll soon be choking out. Now, what we mean by that is that all we need is to control a small part of you. So, in this case, controlling the finger and soon we'll move up and be controlling your wrists. Growing up a little further, we'll be controlling your elbow, then be controlling your shoulders, and before you know it, you're choking out. Now, a lot of my clients used to come to me and the first thing they'd say is, hey Chantal, I need a website. So they're cool, put a website together for them. And I would then take an extremely direct approach and I'd say, listen, cool, you got your website, it is absolutely pointless without getting traffic to it. Um, 
you can maybe call me giving them the f or tempting them to give me the finger by, by giving them this direct approach. And a lot of them would then decide, okay, well, I'm going to test run AdWords. And I knew that's all I needed. I needed a month. I could probably show in maybe a few days the results that Google AdWords could give them. And um, a lot of them have been testing out AdWords for about four years already. And what I love about it is that they're speaking to their friends that have websites and are essentially saying exactly the same to them. Like, it's all good and well, you've got this pretty website, but there's nobody seeing it. Just think, what I said earlier, if 85% of my clients' traffic are coming through Google AdWords, if they had, let's say, 100 visits to their sites in a month, without AdWords, they would have had 15 visits to their sites. And I bet about seven of those visits are actually themselves. My hand made a slight popping sound, and uh, it wasn't swollen, it wasn't bruised, so I didn't really think anything of it, but I woke up the next morning and it hurt like an absolute bitch. So I uh, had to go to the doctor, and 48 hours later, I was actually in surgery, getting the bone in my hand replaced. What had happened was, um, during a, a jiu-jitsu class, there was a new guy in class and he was a lot bigger than me and in my arrogance I wanted to show that a small girl can beat up a big boy um, by, showing, by doing a little bit of technique and so I tried to put on a choke on when I didn't have my basic principles in place. Um, the result was that he, with his strength, could just basically toss me aside and when he rolled me off him, my hand got stuck between his back and the mat and we both rolled over my hand and and so, and so it broke. So for, for me, it's about getting that base right um, before we, we start you know, going, taking it up to the next level. And the base in this case is very much your, your, word, your, or your website. We'll go into why WordPress in a moment. Um, your, WordPress, your WordPress site needs to talk to two entities that I feel are most important. They need to be able to speak to Google, and they also need to be able to speak to the user. Um, let's just chat, as you can see, let's talk Google first, just in case I forgot what I was going to say. We'll chat about Google first. Um, being an AdWords partner, Google sends us quite a nice amount of, of reading materials, and they've basically told us, you know, how, how does your website need to talk to Google? What, what does Google want to see there? And I'm not speaking about going crazy SEO on you. I'm saying just a couple of key things. If you can get right, Google is going to absolutely love you. Um, but first thing is yeah, that damn pop-up. You know your client's going to ask you for one because they're so proud of something popping up on the screen, their latest special. Um, they want it on the home page. As soon as somebody goes there, they want something flashing in the face. Google hates it. Do not do, not do it. If you want to get minus points with Google, put pop-ups on your page. No pop-ups, please. They also want to see easy navigation on the website. Um, that ease of navigation is not only for on desktop, but they want to see ease of navigation on mobile as well. So make sure that your site is very mobile friendly. Um, they also very much look at transparency. Uh, when I speak about transparency, it's like ensure that the contact details are easily found. I know these sound like all basics that you're going, uh, well, uh, obviously, logically, but you'll be surprised how many websites actually don't have this in place. Um, also, they're just they're looking for something that's content rich. The whole reason that Google remains the powerhouse that they are today is that they reward relevancy. So they don't want a user coming to your site and they're not finding what, what they're wanting to read. They're not finding what they're looking for. Um, that starts making maybe, if they're getting better results on Bing, and so the shift is going to happen. So basically, Google rewards you uh, for that relevancy on your website. So now we've got the traffic. Don't make it all Google friendly and forget about the user. Um, I had a, a potential client that phoned me from uh, Johannesburg, and he says to me, I want Google advertising for my website. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I've learned the hard way that do not get overly excited about a potential client until you've actually checked out their website. So I went online and 
and we're going to screen this profile. That big. Go on, check out his website. I kid you not, his website was about that big in the middle. I could not even read the phone number. It was like cut off. So, and the con it didn't even allow me to scroll down. So basically, it put content in that just suddenly stopped mid-sentence. So uh, I was really glad that I put down the phone before looking at his site because I actually think I gasped. And um, called him back, and the direct approach works again. And I said, listen, I can get you all the traffic you want to your site, but there's no way that this website is going to convert any of them to leads. So it's about the two working uh, harmoniously. Yeah. So let's chat to Google, but make sure once they're there that your website can also convert those people to leads. So it's all good and well that we're chatting about uh, all of this, but why WordPress? I mean, that could be any website, any platform. For Asset Metas, the reason that we chose uh, to go with, Met uh, to go with uh, WordPress is that we felt that it was already halfway there when it came to a lot of the basic principles. Firstly, I don't know if you guys know this, but the, the term WordPress is actually searched 37 million times per month. Okay? Think about that, 37 million times a month. I'm pretty sure a lot of you that own WordPress businesses have uh, come to enjoy a phone call, people looking for a website. They don't actually say, hey, I'm looking for a website anymore. They generally say, I'm looking for a WordPress site. Um, can I get a couple of nods there? You guys feeling it? Okay, cool. Um, so we, it was definitely for us something that drove a business to us, um, especially in the beginning. Um, Added to that, I'm going to be speaking about analytics in a moment, but analytics basically used to, or basically it tells us where maybe our shortfalls are happening within our, within our uh, websites. And what I love about WordPress is that you've got such a big community that is constantly building the solutions uh, for, for these problems. So it's not about you having to go and reinvent the wheel. A lot of the time the solutions are already out there. Um, cases are such as uh, maybe Loading time on the site is uh, too slow, and then you go check it out, you go onto the community and all the plugins, you see like, maybe something else, you can use Smash It for images. So there are things out there that uh, the community is already solving. Also, for me, it's very much as I'm the numbers geek, I'm not the developer geek, um, so I need a time that's really easy to work with, and I found that WordPress just had such flexibility for me. So. A case that happened um, probably about six months ago or so, a client of mine, uh, she has three different packages that she offers. And she phoned me up one day and she said, you know, Chantal, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting calls, but everybody wants package one. And I really want to be selling package two. It's kind of like, you know, they always say you need the bronze, silver, and gold, but it's because you want people to go for the silver. And it just wasn't really happening for her. So, I took a look um, at analytics, I saw that was the page that was just getting all the views. People didn't really go down to, to the second package. And all I did was I went into the menu and it was a drop down, package one, package two, package three. I just went in there and I swapped package two and package one around. They weren't called package two and package one, just by the way, because that would have looked kind of weird. Um, swapped them around and Immediately, as in the first week, she came back to me and she was like, I'm now getting people contacting me for package two. And it was simple as that. Went into analytics and suddenly that was the, the page that was getting the most, the most visits. It was amazing. I don't know, users, <laughs> users are stupid. Or <laughs> <laughs> so something as simple as that, um, the ease and the flexibility of WordPress just makes it easy to manipulate things how, how you actually want it. turning around, like you know when you're walking across a one-way road, um, but the cars can only come from the one way, but you still check the other way? I mean, I can see it here, but yeah, that's cool. Checking for the other car. Um, the third part of our triangle is Google Analytics. You know, analytics for me, at Metis, I think it keeps us, it keeps us on our toes, it keeps us honest. It's it provides us with information that um, essentially tells us where we're going wrong and how we can improve our product. K 
cases are such as uh, we had a client who was getting like about a 12% conversion rate on desktop, um, but maybe I think it was about a 2% conversion rate on mobile. So immediately we were able to then go and take a look, why is this happening? Was able to see a bit of a problem that we had, was able to make the change, and from there, suddenly his conversion rate for mobile went up Im almost immediately. Um, and there's just a variety of places that, for us, it just makes us better developers. And now, those sort of techniques you take with you to the next project as well. So immediately, your product is constantly evolving, constantly improving. Um, not only did it provide amazing information for us, but it provided really good intel for our clients. And, you know, it, a lot of people think it helps you make only marketing decisions, and I totally disagree with that. For me, it's, it's something that helps them make really good business decisions as well. A case that happened, um, I think it was last year, was I was having an analytics meeting with one of my clients, and we just saw, even though they were a Cape business, and even their websites, we mentioned that we were a Cape Town-based business, they, on their location report, um, Joburg was just converting really, it was like double conversions on, at, in Joburg compared to Cape Town, which is not unusual to see, but it is kind of unusual when you're telling people that you're a Cape Town based company. But my client said, well, it seems that there's the opportunities in Joburg. So they went and opened, they got an agent in Joburg, opened up an agency there. So immediately it helped them actually expand their company. Um, gone are the days of guesswork. Um, what should I do with my business model? Um, yeah, let me try this. The cold, hard stats are there, and they can assist you in making these decisions. Um, obviously, it also helps with marketing decisions, such as if you're running an AdWords campaign. Um, I was running a banner display campaign alongside a Google search campaign, and we saw search was getting good conversions, good traffic, good leads, and the banners weren't doing so hot. Um, clicks were pretty bad, and there were actually no conversions on it. So we were thinking, well, do we, do we decide to scrap the banner campaign? It's really not giving me the stats that I want. So I thought, no, let me just go check this out a little bit deeper. And by doing that, I noticed that since the banner ads had started showing, their organic traffic, sorry, they were a very new company, like their name was just not known. It was like month one kind of vibe. And um, they were, weren't getting any organic traffic, obviously, in the beginning. Nobody knows who they are. And after running the banner campaign, the organic traffic just suddenly started uh, uh, really skyrocketing. And I went and I was checking, well, what keywords are being, are being found for? They were actually being found for their company name. And that essentially came back to the fact that the banner campaigns was giving them the brand awareness. Now, again, without analytics, I would have just looked at my AdWords interface, gone, oh, that's not working, boom, stop, change, and they would have lost out on a very important part of their business. A lot of people, um, I think, are scared of analytics. And I can understand why. When you go into the interface, it is, it's extremely overwhelming and complicated with the amount of information and data that's there. So um, a lot of people just rather go, oh, just, just rather avoid it. So for me, if I have to leave you with something in regards to analytics, it's just about getting a couple of key principles um, right. With those key principles, you'll find that uh, your data will be accurate. Um, there's nothing worse than inaccurate data that you're making decisions on. So for me, the, the things that I always ensure that our team does is ensure that the latest analytics is installed. Um, the reason for this is that Google will at some point change from the old code to the new code, and things can stop <coughs> working in regards to functionality. Also ensure that um, you're tracking as many conversions as possible on the, on the site. So things such as if somebody is clicking a phone number, click to call, so, uh, which also takes you back down to the website, make sure that your numbers are clickable on the site. So you can actually track if somebody is clicking that number. Um, is somebody sending, clicking an email address? They're sending people direct email. Generally, I find that my email clicks are higher than my form submissions, but a lot of times people only track form submissions. So they're, not, they're actually losing out on what conversions are happening when people click email addresses. Um, product inquiries, sales, you want to be able to track as much of this as possible because it will give you really good data 
And also it's a bit of a showcase for your client. You can like show up and go, check what my website's doing. Um, rather than just maybe tracking form submissions and it doesn't look good. Um, another big thing that I see uh, wrong with a lot of analytics is people don't change the local settings. So when setting up your analytics, just make sure that it is for the area that it needs to be for. So most of the time, it'll probably be for South Africa. You don't want your stats to be showing that most of your leads happen at 3 in the morning um, when it was 1 o'clock in the afternoon because you've, you've put the wrong time zone in there or the currencies are showing in dollars instead of rands. Um, I also make sure that my analytics is linked up to my AdWords campaigns as well as my webmaster tools because as much data as you can possibly get in there you want to have. Ten minutes yet. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, this is a short one. Class will be out early. Um, as you can see, our lethal combination uh, is made up of a triangle and it really comes back down to my favorite move at jiu-jitsu was always the triangle because it's it's a case of three points coming together in perfect sync that will choke out your opponent. Um, in MMA you have your three principles that come together the stand-up, the takedown, the groundwork that all work together to make you the ultimate champion and maybe it was Matt and my love of uh, MMA that got us to form our own triangle of a lethal combination. Um, AdWords to be able to get the traffic to the site. Um, we have our WordPress, which essentially is the base and the foundation to retain our user. And lastly, we have our analytics, um, which then will, will measure how all of that traffic and how that website is performing, which essentially will feed back into a very happy client who will continuously invest in the product. For you guys, I mean, it's very much about finding your own lethal combination. Um, I'm not saying this is going to be what works for you, but definitely to enhance your WordPress business, for me, it's very much about seeing what you can add to it. So identify what disciplines that you feel will work the best with it. Learn those disciplines as best as possible, and always just make sure that you're getting the basics right. I think what you'll find is that they always say that uh, training is harder than the actual fight. And so just ensure that whatever you decide to bring to your business, um, it's something that you're going to be extremely passionate about, something that you're going to love, because you're going to have to work hard at it. Thanks so much. I was going to do a Q&A. You guys love yes. being up here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a few questions from you guys for Chantel, if you do have them. Uh, we do have guys roaming in the back there with microphones. Uh, does anyone have a question for Chantel? Matthew does. You want to go over there, Nick? I'll go over there. Good. Hey. Hey, can you hear me all right? I can. I don't think anyone else can hear you. Um, so, so you talk a lot about sort of Google tools and things like that. So, you know, there's lots of other analytics tools like Kissmetrics and you know Mixpanel and all of those. Mm -hmm. Have you worked with any of that? And sort of what's your, your thoughts on, on those and how they can interplay into that? There are a lot of other tools and I believe they're very good. Um, but for me, um, I'm very comfortable within Google Analytics, so I've continued to well, I've decided to use that as my platform. I think what I realised with um, my business within like year two is that. It's difficult to become an expert at all the tools that are available. So you've got to choose what you feel is going to be best for you and rather stick with that and rather become an expert in that as, as opposed to just being a jack of all trades in, in just everything. Okay, there's a question at the back. Do you have a microphone there or should I run? Should I run? I'm not being told if I, okay, I'll run then. Be careful, Nick, you've just turned 30. <laughs> Unbelievable. And my time is short, so go slow. Okay, here we go. Hi. Um, I was wondering, I had a problem with Google AdWords, how to make them specific to my site, because it's a very um, specialized niche market, and a lot of inappropriate advertising was coming out of my site. May I ask what the niche market is? Vegan abolitionists. Sorry? Vegan? 
a vegan site. Yes. Okay. So I that for advertising pork and. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the the main the main problem I see, and we can chat afterwards, and I could probably get a, a little bit more specific because maybe it's not going to be applicable to everyone here. But the biggest problem when you're speaking about getting inappropriate traffic to your site is that um, people use keywords that are too broad on their website, which is the number one problem I see. And also um, your negative keyword list. Um, generally, when I take over a campaign from a client that was doing it themselves, um, that is the two things that I see that, that happen the most. Personally, when we create a campaign, before, not even, doesn't matter even which industry it is, we have over 200 negative keywords that get added to our sites, which basically gets rid of as much of the bad traffic as possible. Thank you very much. We've got time for one more question from this lady at the front here. Let me just run over quickly. Hi there. Um, you haven't mentioned social media much. I mean, do you look at Facebook traffic or, or that whole side of things, or are you just rely on Google Analytics, or is that just something that's not in your field so, of expertise? Yes. Um, basically, I do believe there is definitely a place for social media. However, as I said, I mean, when we first start, when I first started Metis, we tried to do it all. And the platforms just change, and the trends change so much. I mean, within AdWords itself, I think the interface has changed about four times this year. Um, so for us to be the best at all of the platforms was just gonna be impossible. So what we do is we rather decide to choose what was working for our clients the best at that time. And AdWords was what was giving our, our particular market, which is a small to medium, immediate results. So we decided to choose that one. When it comes to the social media and that, I rather recommend them to go to people that I trust in the industry. No MMA questions. I thought I had to choke someone out. Whoa. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. That's all the time we have for with Chantal, unfortunately. A big round of applause, please, for Chantal Boyer.